Kia ora, I'm Dr David Parsons and I'm going to be talking about the leadership theories that we're going to be covering on the course and also some leadership styles. Mumford talks about the way that leadership theory changes over time. In the early days, leadership theories tended to be person-focused. They looked at traits or skills of leadership, what was sometimes known as the great man theory. But beyond the 50s and the 60s, we moved into role-focused approaches, where we looked more at the behaviours or actions of leaders. We looked at tasks, relations and participation. And since the 1970s, we've looked more at process focus. We've been looking at how a leader influences others, how leadership is seen in context and in relationships with followers. And it's this more contemporary view that's reflected in the theories that we're going to look at. So these are the seven theories we're going to cover. Transactional, transformational, pedagogical, distributed, servant, Turangatira, and situational. And some of these introduce some various types of leadership styles as well. Now Burns wrote a book about leadership where he focused on both transactional and transformational leadership. He spoke about transactional leadership as being very common. It's simply based on an exchange. It might be quite short term. An example might be vote for me and I'll build a wall. And transactional leadership happens a lot, but Burns wanted to go beyond that. He was also concerned with moral leadership, needs, aspirations and values. So he talked about transformational leadership as being more complex and powerful and that transformational leaders engage with followers' motives and potential. And in their book, Bass and Riggio focused specifically on transformational leadership and talked about how it empowers followers and pays attention to needs and personal development. Now, a somewhat New Zealand-focused approach is known as pedagogical leadership, and this is really about leading in schools. Now, early versions of this focused particularly on the leadership of the principal, but more recently, people have been looking beyond the roles of principals and looking at how other members of the school community can provide leadership. And that's summarised in Robinson, Hohipa and Lloyd. And this concept of distributed leadership is quite important. Spillane talks about distributed leadership as being more than just sharing the leadership, but being the collective interactions between leaders, followers and the situation. And the situation is more than the context. It actually defines how leadership works. From another angle, Gron talks about the division of labour in distrib distributed leadership as being either temporary, spontaneous collaboration, or sharing roles in intuitive working relations, perhaps in a shared collaborative classroom, or more formal structures where distributed leadership might be institutionalised within the school. Robert Greenleaf initially wrote about this theory of servant leadership, where leaders should be proven and trusted as servants. And what's interesting here is that Greenleaf talks about a number of characteristics or styles of servant leaders, that they should be showing awareness, they should listen, they should have persuasion, empathy, and so on. And Highsmith, who writes about agile leadership in software development, also talks about this idea of servant leadership being something that involves a number of different styles, situational, adaptive, empowering, and so on. It's actually been applied by a number of authors to teaching. For example, Bowman talks about servant leaders as teachers unleashing the talents of others. Another New Zealand approach is Turangatira. Now, it's specifically a Maori medium educational leadership approach, but its ideas are not limited only to Kura schools. Again, we see this idea of different styles, innovation and vision, and that in, that, in fact, ties in quite nicely with transformational leadership. But it also talks about the stitches in the cloak of the leader embodying a range of roles. Guardian, manager, visionary, learner, worker, networker and advocate. So again, we see that this one theory, but involves a, a, role, a range of different styles. Also, this idea that leadership and management are not the same. Leadership might involve management, but it's much more than that. Situational leadership is quite an old theory. It was originally put forward by Hersey and Blanchard in a 1969 book. And what's interesting about situational leadership is that the leader adapts to the maturity of the followers. And maturity means their experiences and capabilities. And there's this idea in the theory that if your um, followers are immature, that is, they are low in experience and low in capability, then you adopt a directing approach. But over time, as they become more experienced, 
um, you might move through coaching, supporting and delegating. Now, although Hersey and Blanchard's theory has been somewhat critiqued in terms of some of its detail, the general idea is very useful. And this idea that you might adopt different styles over time is very important. So what about leadership styles? What does it really mean? Well, it basically means that if you've got different theories of leadership, they might inside them encompass different leadership styles in practice. So you might apply a number of styles within a single leadership theory. Early studies talked about three styles. Uh, O'Connor reports on democratic, autocratic and permissive as being the three styles that were identified in early studies. But more recently, the Hay Group's six styles have been much more popular and they're based on the work of Litwin and Stringer. Um, these six styles are coercive, authoritative, affiliative, democratic, pace setting and coaching. Now, Daniel Goldman's done quite a bit of work on these styles and he's linked them to emotional intelligence. And one interesting message that he comes up with is this one, that the more styles a leader exhibits, the better. And there are four in particular who are, which are seen as important, democratic, affiliative, coaching, authoritative. These are the ones that are the most effective. And again, it's important that leaders can switch flexibly among these styles as needed. So it reinforces this idea that you can switch around different styles uh, to meet the situation within a single leadership theory. I won't spend time reading my references. If you want to play through the video later and uh, read through them, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, so there's a couple of pages here. Hopefully that was um, a useful introduction to these theories and we'll be covering some of these today and some of them over upcoming weeks.